This is called quadratic identities. Now we've encountered this idea of identities before and to prompt your memory I've put this up on the board, right? or these rather. These are identities. They're not just equations, uh, though they're not less than equations. What makes these identities and not just equations? They are true, they are always true. No matter what values of x you put in there, these things will be the case. As opposed to say something like this. That equation is sometimes true. If you put in a specific value of x, that will be true. But if you put in any value of x here that you like, it works. And that's what we call an identity. Okay? Strictly speaking, therefore, I really should put in loop. some extra lines in there because uh, just like it is like congruence means these aren't just you know, similar to each other. These are exactly the same shape, just you're looking at them differently. These are exactly the same thing. You're just looking at them differently. Okay? Now it's the same deal with the quadratic identities. And we look at identities in quadratics for the same reason that we look at quadratics, sorry, we look at identities in trigonometry. Sometimes a particular way of looking at something makes it much easier to deal with than the other, or, or vice versa. And so you want to reframe the question, you want to rephrase it because you can solve it this, when it looks like this, and you can't solve it when it looks like that. Okay? And I'll give you an example shortly. Here is a pretty typical kind of question that you could have a look at or might be presented with under this heading. And I want you to now pick up your pen and write these two expressions down. Now the question is, express this quadratic here in the form of this. Express the first line in the form of the second. That's what the question is. So what they are implying is that I can say that this is identical to this Supposing I know what a, b, and c are equal to, okay? So I can say 2x squared plus 3x take away 6 is exactly identical to this second expression for every single value of x that exists. So long as I know what a, b, and c are, and there's only a specific a, b, and c for which this works, okay? So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. You already, based on what we've looked at this morning and in other topics, you already know one of the methods, or at least how the, like the principle underneath one of the methods. What could you do to have a go at finding what A, B, and C are? Any suggestions? Think back to what we did just this morning. If I expand out, right, uh, over on the right-hand side, I've got a whole bunch of manipulation to do, but presumably I will end up with a quadratic in X. And there's a quadratic in x over here. So I should be able to do a comparison of what again? Coefficients. Coefficients. And then I set them to be equal. Then I can find a, b, and c. And that will work. Let's give this a go and see what happens. On the right hand side, oh yeah, question? If you do, um, if you do the sum of the roots, because you know like c plus negative c. So uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different ways to work this out. <coughs> As it happens, I don't believe c is negative 6. But I'll, I'll show you that in a second, okay? Uh, in fact, you've just reminded me there's not two ways to do this. Well, not only two ways, there's at least three. We'll see if we get to all of them by the end of this. I'm definitely going to show you two. Let's take Paul's suggestion to begin with and expand this guy, right? So on the right hand side, uh, this is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. Yep. Plus bx plus b plus c. How's that look? Is that okay? Uh, I can keep on going, so I'll expand this whole thing here. ax squared plus 2ax plus a. And at this point, I've expanded as far as I possibly can. So now it's time to begin comparing. I've got some x squared terms on the left, and I've got some x squared terms on the right. Let's carefully look through all the terms and see how many. On the left, how many x squareds do I have? Uh, I've got two of them. There's one term, but how many x squareds are there? Well, there's two. When you have a look at the right-hand side, how many terms have x squared in them? A. Just the one term, and there's the a right there. So you can see comparison of coefficients for the x squareds is quite nice and simple, right? That's good. Let's keep going down the line. How, what's, what's the number of x's on the left? Three. This one's a little more complicated, not heaps, but a little more, because you can see I have an x term here and an x term there. 
Do you agree? So these guys here should make up three. And then lastly, have a look at the constant terms. So um, with no x's here, you've got a negative six. Have a look on the right, what's left behind? A plus B plus C. There you go. So now I can do my comparison. And I'm going to mention, like I went through this in a particular order, um, the order in which you compare them will make things easier or harder. So I'm going to say, by comparison, um, I can just say A equals 2. Done. No need to. Uh, go and make a, make a drama about it. If you want to be uh, really technical or nice, you can say where I get that from is the x squared coefficients. Yeah? What about the x coefficients? What do I write from there? I would say that uh, 2a plus b is equal to 3. But I already, I just worked out what a was. So I might as well just work this out now, right? Uh, a is 2. So I can say 4 plus b equals 3. So now I know what b is, okay? I've done the x squareds, I've done the x's. The last one is the the constant term. Okay, so let's have a look on the right hand side. As the newer mentioned, I've got a plus b plus c. What's it equal to on the left? Negative six. But I know what a and b are equal to already. Uh, two and negative one. Yes. So it looks to me like this will be 1. I subtract from both sides, which gives me that. Happy? So, <coughs> excuse me. There was method 1. I now have values for A, B, and C. So if I wanted to, I could say right up the top that this is equal to, let's see here, two lots of this and take away one lot of this and subtract that. There you go. Sorry, Eric, did you have a question, or...? Oh, I wrote the original equation down. <laughs> Why are all my minus signs different? Um, okay, so I found A, B, and C. I have answered the question because A, B, and C were not the answers. We wanted to write this in a new form. So this new form is the answer, okay? By the way, we would say that this is a quadratic in x. We'd call this guy a quadratic in x plus 1. Um, or if you had like something different here, I could have a quadratic in y, or a quadratic in sine, or a quadratic in whatever you like. Okay. All right. Happy times. Does that make sense? By comparison of coefficients, that's method one. Okay. Maybe I'll even write that. Uh, about here is where I start doing it. Because the key thing is that it requires expansion. Okay.